Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. Right in the middle of rewiring the Pontiac Le Mans here. Um, got some parts on order. It's taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to take. Um, of course, they always do. So I wanted to do a video on something that actually I've seen a lot of people have questions about. And it's about that positive battery cable that you have in your old classic car, your muscle car, your truck, and uh, whether or not that battery cable can melt, possibly become grounded, and even catch fire. And I kind of want to see if I can tackle that problem in today's video, so let's get to it. So I'm not sure if you saw my previous video where I was doing the engine and start charge wiring on the 68 Pontiac. Uh, but I kind of showed that there was a design flaw in Pontiacs and they had this little tube that was running down between the exhaust manifolds. Your positive battery cable went down through that tube and down to the starter. This little tube right here actually. The problem is, is way back in the day, they put a little asbestos lining inside this tube and the battery cable could go down through there and it was fairly protected by the asbestos. After time, of course, those things wear out, they get worn out, they fall off, they get lost, tossed aside, whatever. And then that battery cable and the insulation on that cable is on that metal tube. And so a lot of people with Pontiacs have always talked and asked questions about, hey, how do I re reroute this? How do I do something to protect this? Or, hey, my battery cable melted. Or, hey, my insulation's gone. And so many people will always say, the best thing for you to do is to run that positive battery cable from the front. So not actually go out to the engine here. Let me show you real quick. So before, the little tube was right down in here. And it was supposed to protect the battery cable from the heat from the exhaust manifold, heat from the engine, that sort of thing. And in my case, same thing happened. The positive battery cable melted and it grounded out and it nearly caught fire. So in my case, I needed to figure out a way to run that battery cable down in front of the engine, along the side of the engine, and then connect directly to the starter that way. And again, so many people I've seen in forums and everything ask questions. Hey, can you send me a picture of how you did it? Hey, does anybody know how to run that cable? And uh, there's a lot of... And so there really isn't a whole lot out there. I've actually, like I said, I've looked for videos. There are no videos. I've looked for... Some people had pictures. Some people had suggestions of what you could do. And I figured it might be a really good idea to sort of make a video to show how you can protect your car. I've heard the horror stories even in the forums of somebody saying, I went, I went into to breakfast and somebody came running in that a car in the parking lot was on fire and it was my car and it, the battery cable had touched on metal and it had started it ablaze. So while I will say that this, I believe, was a serious design flaw, they didn't have much of a choice. And I found it out too as I was running my positive battery cable. My goal initially was to run my positive cable around the inner fender to the firewall and then try to connect to the starter down there. The problem that you have is there is absolutely no room. And I'll get under there and show you in a second, but I kind of wanted to go over what some of the options are. In 1967, Pontiac had the same issue. Um, with they, Whenever they used high output engines or the Ram Air engines, so for a 67 GTO, so what they would do is in the, in some of those models, because again they had even less room than they do here with the standard exhaust. Uh, so what they would do was actually run the positive cable from the front up here from the battery tray, and they would run it down here, and then they would attach this tube to the motor mount, and then that would allow your uh, battery cable to be a bit protected and then it could go straight into the starter from there. So I figured, you know, maybe that would be something, you know, something as an option for me. But I kind of wanted to try something different only because I don't have a whole lot of room now to mount this onto that motor mount. I've already dropped this engine in. I've got the transmission all hooked up. Everything's good to go. I really don't want to pick this thing back up again. <laughs> in the same GM family, the Chevys had a clip that you could use and I, I figured maybe I would try this because it's a little less invasive. Um, what I could do is I actually ordered two of these little clips. They're for 64 to 72 
Chevelles and Monte Carlos and that sort of thing. And I thought maybe I could try this. And what it is is a little tiny clip that's designed to attach to your oil pan and and then follows the ridge of the oil pan then it has a clip that hangs out that could hold the battery cable now there's not much room in there i may have to do a little bending on this but what i've got to do is i've got to run my starter wire and my battery my positive battery wire down through there and so what i figured i would do is try out these clips see if they work and i've got two of them here attach them to the oil pan and then at the same time it's going to use this DEI heat sheath to it's fairly long it's several feet long and give protection from d down in here all the way through until I can have the, uh, the wires exit right at the starter and I'm gonna see if I can get that done today so here's that sheath from DEI you can see it's fairly long so I should be able to run it the starter is right here behind this the the sort of down drop of the exhaust manifold it's a, it's right back in there so what i should be able to do is run it out to about here maybe cut it off here and then i'll be able to just have the rest of the positive cable come up to the battery but i can get both wires in there i've got the three quarter inch size on this so it should be plenty of room and it should be really good protection so yeah here's my starter it goes right up in here these two bolts here so you can tell it fills up this whole area and look how close the exhaust manifold is so there's just no room at all so the clips look like they actually might fit up there on the oil pan and I've cut these stretched out a bit and this is kind of where it would be it would hang from the oil pan the only thing I don't like is that the clip hangs down if it, held, if, it, if it hung up, it could hold on to the wire. But I might have to just put these on and pinch them down a little bit. Don't want to damage the battery cable. But at least I can make sure it's got a nice strong hold up there. Okay, there is one of the clips up in there. Had to make sure I didn't tighten too hard. It only requires 12 foot-pounds of torque for a Pontiac oil pans. But I wanted to make sure it was nice and tight and had a good connection let's get the other side on okay so i cannot mount that clip on that one the motor mount is in the way and it's keeping me from getting any access this one i believe is too far back the starter itself the back of the starter is going to be right there so I don't think that'll help. Maybe I'll just put two clips on the front. Got my battery cable is going to be here. It runs down and around underneath the battery tray so that I've got excess so that when I drop the starter down the wires can come down with it and then as I tighten them up as I bring this back up tighten this up once I've got a starter back in so now it's just going to be a matter of cutting off the right amount I need to put the starter down there sort of measure where I need to be and then cut things off. And this is also the starter wire. The purple wire is run from the harness back around here, goes down to the starter. The other thing I wanted to do was actually bend this before I put it onto the wire to make sure I've got a fairly decent 45 uh, on my battery cable wire. The purple wire, I'll put one on there as well and bend that one. And now I've got a clamp on the frame, keep it from wandering into the belts, and we should be good with that. So it's kind of hard to tell, but I've got it in there on the clip. It's holding mostly the, just the wire itself. It's not really, the sort of insulation is just sort of hanging down, but it's 
it's gripping the wire. I got it bent around so that it's holding on to it like that. Let me see if I can get it from the other angle. Yeah, you can sort of see it in there. It's pretty tight around the wire. It's not holding on to it to damage it, but it should be fine. Okay, so I'm not ready to cut it and install the wires yet, but as you can see, the installation stops right at the right spot. I'll probably have to trim it back a little bit. Then install my uh, terminals and we should be good. Um, I'm just not there yet. I've still got, as you can see, I've got to get the exhaust uh, back up there and do some other things first. But yeah, just kind of wanted to give you an idea that you can run it from the battery through the front of the engine and up to the starter. Okay, so that's gonna do it. Hopefully that clamp will hold. It's actually a lot tighter on there than maybe it looks like on video. Plus I have the other clamp down on the frame that'll keep it from moving around too much. I also still have enough good slack in there that allows me to bring the starter down, put it back up. So hopefully that works out. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Um, if I got anything wrong or if you have a better suggestion, I'd love it, love to hear about it. Again, down in the comments, I'd appreciate it. Like it if you get anything out of the video. And I'd love it if you could subscribe too. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff on this Pontiac. Still got to finish the interior wiring, got to do the taillight section, and then I'm going to get it started up. Still have a few things to button up down here in the engine bay, of course. But uh, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, a, a journey. So I'd love it if you could join with me as I try to figure all this out. Thank you very much for tuning in and we will catch you next time.